This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and I'm going to be doing something a little bit different in this uh, video. Instead of implementing a particular mechanic or feature in Unity, I'm going to be playing a complete game by someone else and kind of analyzing it, taking a look at its features, its systems, and some of their design, design decisions that they made. So today we're going to be looking at Cultist Simulator. This is a game by the creator of Fallen London and Sunless Sea, though through a different company. This is now through uh, Weather Factory. Uh, but you can, you can see a lot of the influences if you've played either of those games um, of that creator's kind of style in this game. But it also, in this case, takes a, a much more marked turn toward um, kind of like card game based play. And so we're going to look at how this game kind of blends kind of the, the best of both worlds in terms of board game mechanics or card game mechanics and video game features. So we'll begin game here. And there's three main things I want to talk about in this um, in this particular playthrough. And those are going to be the actions that you take, um, as well as the aspect kind of system that they use for how different items can interact. And finally, talking about how this game uses time, which I think is really probably the most clever thing that it does. And I'll talk about why that is um, as we get uh, moving forward here. As you can see at the start here, though, you really have only two items. Um, it's sort of the idea of tutorial through limited actions, which I think is a really good idea. It's sort of that kind of Nintendo-based approach that, you know, when you start a game, you, you're you in a relatively safe space in the game, and you can kind of try out the basic mechanics, and you can't really progress until you've figured out how those mechanics work. So in this case here, for example, we only have two things. We have a card, and we have this weird square with an icon on it. And if we click on the square here, the larger of the two, we see that we get this sort of, we get a verb here, work. We get a little description, earn a living or practice the invisible arts. And we get a card-shaped slot, which kind of tells us um, from a UI standpoint, chances are that these two things interact, which is another, again, this is a good way of guiding the player through the process. I appreciate that. But what I also like about this is that each of these actions, and we're going to get more over the course of the game, as you see here, there's two options, earn a living or practice the invisible arts, meaning that work does a couple of things. You can do a job, or you can actually start doing some occult stuff later on as you get the access to those cards. So it's very much uh, kind of built into that idea as well that any given action can do multiple things. And that's always a positive thing when you have a tool at your disposal that can solve multiple problems. So in this case here, I can click and drag this into here, and we see that it kind of creates this potential of um, me working a shift at the hospital that I work at. Now what's important about this is why was I able to put this card in here? And it's not something you necessarily see right away. Um, obviously it's card shaped slot here, but if I click on the card itself, we see that this card has this particular, what they call an aspect of job. And this aspect icon matches the icon of the action. And a lot of this game is built on this idea that each of these cards have these aspects. It could be a job, it could be a location, it could be a book, it could be an idea, it could be a memory, it could be lore, it could be, and it could be multiple of these things. For example, a particular book might be a text, but it might also be lore. And so what actions you can take really, or what cards you can use with what actions depend on what icons they have. One little bit of a shortcoming, I think, is that there are some cards that will have the right icon but still won't work. It's a little bit arbitrary in that sense. And that I don't love if it's gonna be such an icon-driven game. I almost feel like it should be all or nothing. But um, I also haven't gotten super deep into the game where maybe that becomes more pertinent later on. Anyway, now, so this is our action. We've added this card of menial employment in this case. So this case, the card represents the work that we're doing and then we can hit start. And this is where we're gonna get into that time idea. When I hit start here, we see that this timer starts going and I can hit pause and immediately pause this to talk about what this timer really means. Because it seems when you first see something like this and also it appears around the um, square icon here. So even if I were to close this, I could see the progress happening. It seems like this is gonna be a time-based game now all of a sudden you're like, oh, I've got to um, you know, kind of start doing some Twitch gaming here. I've got to quickly respond and move these cards around before time runs out. But that's not really the case because you can you can actually pause the game anytime you want and you can still interact. We can't really see this right now because I don't have anything else to interact with. 
but you can keep on I can click and look at these I can read this is the card I was using I can take a look at what the icon means I can read all of this stuff at my leisure so the timer isn't about twitch gaming the timer is really a resource just like you might have enough gold or wood or resources in another game time becomes one of those resources a lot of cards and actions are going to have these timers either how much time a card is going to last before it changes into something else or disappears or how much time an action takes to finish and those that combination of things is going to determine what you can do for example if you need a res if you have a resource that you want to use within a certain period of time but the action to do it is going to take more time to finish then you might not get to use that resource it might disappear before the action finishes and resets so that you can use it that's that sort of dichotomy and balancing that dichotomy is really what time is about in this game so it really kind of changes you're thinking of how you're using time in the game, uh, which I think is a really clever tool. So let's see all this in action here. As this timer finishes up here, you can also speed up time a little bit, although 10 seconds isn't too bad to wait. And now we see that there's a new action that appears here, this dream action, which is also kind of automatically running, but also I've gotten two cards out of here now. So when you, when you put, typically it's sort of that engine building where you put one card into an action, you get two back um, or more back. Or you get one back, but it's something that has, um, something that has improved. So now I've also gotten two cards from this dream, which sort of started automatically. And I got, so in my dream here, I got contentment for kind of sleeping peacefully. And I got passion, which is one of my, um, one of my, stats down here. There are four total stats that you kind of work with in addition to all of the other types of cards. But these are sort of your main, um, the main four that you use, which is why they both exist down here in your UI. But that's really just representing which cards you have. Everything really comes down to either cards or actions. So in this case here, we see that I got funds and health from working, um, doing that menial job. So I can continue working. I could put um, health in here to do that. However, the other thing that's important here is this time passes now that it's appeared. And what this does is basically what's going to happen is once this timer finishes out this first time, there's usually when you first get an action, there's sort of an initial phase of, oh, the action happens. But now there is um, time, the sundial shell passes, I must have funds to live or I will become ill. So every minute I need to put funds into this, it sort of represents my apartment costs, my food costs, things like that. So I need to actually kind of start taking action here and start getting some more um, money. So what I might do is say put in this, do some unskilled labor for work here and hit start. And now this will eventually give me some money for having worked. Over here, the study also appeared. And what happened in there, I got a lot of cards, I got like 11 cards it says here, is that um, basically in the course of this initial happening here, these sort of automatically appear for you. And the, the narrative of the game is that you are, you've received a will um, and a bequest from uh, this old man at the hospital that you were initially working at. And so he gives you a bequest that you can look at. He gives you nine funds. Um, that just actually automatically took one for the um, time passing again there. And he gave me um, the reason, which is the last of my sort of um, main stats down here. So I'll say collect all and get those. And so now study is another one of these kind of dual or actually really multiple use actions. In this case, if I click on this icon here, I see that I can use study with a tutor. I can use it with text so I can read books with it. I can re um, analyze lore with it. I can improve my abilities, these different ability cards with it, and I can advance, um, I can use it to advance those abilities, and finally I can use it um, to translate text as well. So there's a lot of different things I can do with studying. But that being said, I also only have one study action, so I may at any time have multiple things I want to do with studying, but can only do one at a time, and then I have to wait that time resource for that to happen. Um, a new kind of condition here has appeared, a trembling in the air. This is, um, let me see here, the sun flickers like a shadow, dreams ripple behind the surface of mirrors. You can really tell the sort of um, Alex Kennedy's style of this sort of narrative um, elements here. I don't have any shadows, so that's not going to um, 
take anything from you at the moment. Anything with this magnet sort of soaks up um, items that you have over time. And then over here, I have my um, unskilled labor. I got my health back. This was actually probably fatigued for a bit, which we didn't see there. I got a vitality and I got some funds. So what I might do is I'm actually probably gonna do another work here again with the health because that's gonna get me another vitality. And this is sort of the, um, this is the currency you use to actually improve your skills in the study. So we're gonna let that happen there. But as you can see, I'm starting to build up kind of a collection of these different items um, and things. And now a couple new um, conditions have appeared here as well. A pleasant day, uh, that might give me a good card, we'll see. And then this one here, the light in the skull, um, I may gain some knowledge from this. So these are these squares are both kind of either actions you can take or they're sometimes just certain special conditions happening. This one here, for example, gave me a um, consciousness and a fleeting memory, although that fleeting memory just disappeared on me. Um, consciousness of radiance. I could actually probably um, see this has uh, an influence and this lantern aspect. So I could use that for something. Now I might say, for example, oh, I got an erudition too. Uh, this is basically like the vitality is used to improve um, your health. Um, erudition can be used to improve your reason. So what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna put this vitality in here before it dies out and this vitality in and hit start. And so what that now does, um, the timer kind of stops on those, but that gives, that's going to give me an extra health now, which is um, useful because it prevents you from dying if you ever get sick or anything accidentally. Pleasant day gave me some contentment that I could potentially use, although that's about to burn out as well. So as you can see the timer, and I've been leaving this these timers to just to run um, so things have kind of been burning off on me as I've been talking and not paying attention. But again, you can pause this game anytime and now I can really start kind of strategically looking and saying, okay, I've got 40 seconds left on this. I've only got three seconds here, so I can't obviously do anything with these two things. Contentment, for example, has lantern and um, heart aspect and things on it. So I might look and see, is there something I can do with that? Can I use... Um, can I use, say, contentment or anything with my slot for dream? One nice thing is that if you click on, say, dream, it will highlight any cards that have the matching, um, have these matching symbols on them. However, again, they don't always all work together. For example, right now, if I try to put this um, fatigue in there, actually, I can. Um, and that's probably because it's an affliction. I could use that to recover um, from that fatigue a little bit quicker. Um, however, there might be other things that it would claim would work with it. Um, I don't. I think all these actually will in this case, but there are definitely situations where I've had a card that has the right symbol, but then doesn't work with the particular action I'm trying to take, which again is not, it's probably my one kind of complaint with the game at this time, but um, I, again, I'm sure there's reasons for it that um, as I get deeper into the game would be more understandable. But really, those are the three main mechanics that we see here that kind of, this is the loop that you get into is you are um, working with these timers, making sure that you have time enough with the resources that you have that you can get your engine going and getting, getting into a good rhythm almost of you know, when things are done and ready to go, you have resources ready to use with them, but also that the resources you have aren't going to expire before you're ready to use them. And so it creates this really interesting mix of card game, basic card game mechanics, like everything here is a card that I can, I can move these around wherever I want. If I want to put all of my stats in one section, I can certainly do that. Um, various things like that. However, it combines it with these kind of uniquely video game things like this timer that really adds this extra level as well as just this, the sheer variety of cards that you can have in this because it's all just stored in data. Um, it's a really cool, um, cool experience that I would encourage you to try out if you haven't. One feature that I don't see here that I think would be cool is in addition to being able to fast forward time to kind of go through the timers a little bit quicker, it would make sense for them just to have a step forward that would just look at what timers are currently running and to simply go to the next 
you know, advance the time that much as the lowest timer. So in this case here, it might advance 3.8 seconds and just get rid of that contentment. And then you could simply move on to um, the next step that you're looking for. It would definitely make the game feel a little bit more turn-based and less like a flow of time, which may be why they didn't include it because they really want that sort of flow feeling through it. But it seems to me that it would be relatively easy to implement any time a timer starts. It could kind of assign itself to a static timer manager in the world. And then you would simply look through, find the lowest number on any given timer and advance that far in time. Um, could be a cool feature for the game in the future. Maybe they'll do it, maybe they won't. But that was my only real implementation or mechanical thought um, as I was playing this um, at this time. But I do really appreciate the way that their system, these systems all work together to create this sort of very board game feeling engine building system using these um, kind of quintessentially video game mechanics. So this is the first of these kind of playthrough analyses that I'm going to be doing. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. Um, hopefully they'll get better over time. I'm probably going to do these for the next couple of weeks just because I'm also um, taking a class and these are a little bit more time efficient to do. But um, let me know what you think about them in the comments. If there's a particular game you'd like me to um, try and take a look at, I will certainly attempt to do so. And other than that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.